They do the toughest jobs in law enforcement and provide safety and security services statewide. Each day across the state, the 23,000 members of the New York State Corrections Officers and Police Benevolent Association render crucial and diverse services to the people of New York. Just as they stand together in dealing with the challenges and dangers of their jobs, NYSCOBA members are committed to standing together through a strong and independent union. From contract negotiations to grievance and disciplinary actions, NYSCOBA is committed to meeting the needs of its members. Dedicated to improving the quality of life of officers, NYSCOBA is also active in enhancing the public image of its members. Representing 42 titles in 17 agencies, NYSCOBA was founded by officers for officers. Starting at the facility level and continuing through regional and statewide offices, each position is filled by either a correctional officer, a correctional sergeant, a law enforcement officer, or a law enforcement supervisor. Regardless of their rank or agency, each has spent years on the job and inside the walls. This is the story of NYSCOBA's founding, its history, and its quest to improve the lives of its members. This is NYSCOBA, New York's independent law enforcement union. The story of the New York State Correction Officers and Police Benevolent Association is the story of independence. It's the story of perseverance and how a dedicated group of officers and sergeants fought one of the nation's largest public employees unions to create a union run by officers for the benefit of officers. For decades, the voices and concerns of dedicated correction and law enforcement officers were drowned out by layers of union bureaucracy. Tens of millions of dollars were sent to national and international organizations, organizations that were not responsive to the needs and desires of the average member working in a jail. Organizations whose leaders were unaccountable and unfamiliar with the jobs their members did on a daily basis. Now all that has changed. Today, NYSCOBA members run their own union. They set policy through elected representatives who are accountable to the rank and file. And union officials are men and women who work the same jobs they do. Dues money is spent where it does the most good for officers both on the job and in their communities. At one time, the pay and legislative priorities for those charged with ensuring the public safety were tied to the needs of non-security workers like clerks and secretaries, from the halls of the state capitol to negotiating rooms and the communities they serve. NYSCOBA's only concern is ensuring members are compensated and treated as the law enforcement professionals they are. NYSCOBA members own their own headquarters building in Albany. It's here that the union staff experts work on key areas such as health and safety, discipline and grievance, member benefits, legislative affairs, and health insurance. In each of these vital areas, NYSCOBA has made significant improvements for members. The accomplishments of NYSCOBA in its early years stands in sharp contrast to its very humble beginning. We started right here in this building, in a basement, with all the officials in one basement, with two secretaries. That's where we started with absolutely nothing. We didn't even have pencils. We used our own, our own phones, our own paper, our own, our own everything. Founded in 1998, NYSCOBA is the product of the final of three decertification votes that were attempted against the prior bargaining unit Council 82 of the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, AFSCME, part of the AFL-CIO. As a relatively small part of such larger organizations, the needs of New York's corrections officers and sergeants often took a back seat to other groups. This became abundantly clear during the correction strike of 1979. The SEA at that time was an independent union. They were not affiliated in any way uh, with AFSCME. And they had already reached a tentative agreement in March of that year and they had sent their ballots out for ratification uh, while we were on strike. And they held up counting their ballots. We received a call from the president of CSEA for a meeting. The president of CSEA stated that if the correction officers receive anything more than what we have already tentatively agreed to for the membership of CSEA, 
They then turned to the representative from ASME and said, there will not be any merger between CSEA and ASME in the very near future. Basically, our own union held us hostage because for every dollar we were trying to increase for the members of Council 82, you had to multiply that by 200,000 members of CSEA. So that had a significant impact on whatever settlement we were going to receive for the efforts of being on on strike. Following the job action, Fitzpatrick traveled around the state to talk to officers about the resolution of the strike. He found many who were angry with the handling of the situation. The seeds of Nyscoba were planted. They were seeing contracts with zeros in there. They felt that they were not getting represented properly with disciplines and so on and so forth, or grievances were going unheard. They wanted to know with full fortitude, if you will, to uh, go after a conglomerate as big as uh, AFSCME and uh, take them on and become a bargaining unit to represent them as an independent. We decided at some point in time there would just seem to be enough interest out there that this is the right way to go. Following two failed decertification votes in 1984 and 1994, the dream of independence for New York's corrections officers would not die. There was still a group of officers who continued to believe that if correctional officers and sergeants were ever going to be treated fairly by the state and receive the professional recognition they deserved in their community, it was going to require an independent union. And under 82, it seemed that we had become forgotten. Those of us that never got disciplined, always came to work, didn't have time and attendance problems. The union's time was consumed by those issues. And the issues that were important to the rest of us sometimes always seem to be on the back burner. And you saw a field rep periodically in a facility. You hardly ever saw the executive board in a facility. You hardly ever got to talk to somebody on the phone. You got a voicemail. When you go independent, you have nobody else to focus on but yourself. And that's one of the main reasons to go independent. You don't have to worry about other work titles. You have to focus on your needs and your needs only. And our needs were extensive. Organizers who supported the idea of independence crisscrossed the state, preaching the message that COs needed to form an independent union. With the help of local organizers at each facility, enough challenge cards were collected and a third decertification vote was held on April 29, 1999. What we wanted to do was to hire professionals to do the job professionals should have been doing all along. And that meant legal representation, that meant political representation. We're correction officers, we're a union, but we're not experts in other areas. When the votes were counted, over 12,000 eligible officers had voted in favor of forming their own union. NYSCOBA was born. This organization is truly owned by the members. Under Council 82, we were dues-paying members, but that's it, we paid dues. With NYSCOPA, the dues-paying members are, in essence, stockholders. They actually own the organization. On May 24, 1999, NYSCOPA became the official bargaining unit for New York's corrections officers, correctional sergeants, and assorted law enforcement titles. Together, they took control of their future and separated themselves from non-law enforcement state workers and the two national organizations which sapped their resources and controlled their destinies. We had to hit the ball running. I mean, what goes on here at the Capitol, we knew what we had to do from Jump Street. So we hired the best lobbying firm that we could so that we could get immediate access to the people we needed to tell our story to and tell them what our needs and concerns were. We also had to meet with the agencies immediately. We had to get our membership going. We had to have local elections. It was a lot in the first few years uh, of getting up and started. Since those early days, NYSCOBA has amassed a record of success and learned important lessons when mistakes were made. Everything the union has done, from the way it is structured and run to its legislative and image enhancement efforts, is geared to improving the lives of members. A key goal in the formation of NYSCOBA was breaking pattern bargaining. This was a practice whereby unions received the same or similar pay raises. While Nascoba was unable to break the pattern in its first contract negotiations, progress was made. We were able to crack the pattern. 
All right, we didn't break the pattern. We got the same percentage increases across the board that other organizations got, but we were able to create new monies such as performance incentives or the security law enforcement differential and things of that nature. Breaking pattern bargaining was going to take a hammer. That hammer would be binding arbitration, something unimaginable for corrections officers and sergeants under Council 82. We were given a lot of money at that time to AFSCME, the International Union. They weren't helping us at all trying to obtain binding arbitration because they represent so many other unions. If they give it to us, they'd have to give it to the rest of them. So they weren't fighting for us in that route at all. With each successive contract negotiation, NYSCOBA has chipped away at the corrosive effects of pattern bargaining. The results can be seen in the pay of its members. When NYSCOBA was certified in 1999, an officer with 25 years on the job was only making $43,000 a year and could not make any more money than that, unless it was through contract negotiations. It takes an officer approximately eight years to get the job right. Today, an officer who gets to job right now is making over $50,000 a year. They're doing in less than eight years what an officer with 25 years couldn't do eight years ago. Binding arbitration was a key element of NYSCOBA's initial legislative agenda and was finally passed in December of 2001. But decades of neglect had left a long list of other issues that needed to be addressed. We didn't have a presence within these chambers. Um, but we do now, we have a presence here, we're recognized and we advocate for our members very strongly. They come to me, we discuss the issues at hand, um, they are very persistent and tenacious about their support of their members. We meet with NYSCOBA on a regular basis. My staff, uh, Steve Longo, would say that he sees a representative from NYSCOBA almost every day, especially during legislative session. One of the main elements of NYSCOBA's strategy was the production of Inside the Walls. This documentary was a truthful look at the contributions correction officers and sergeants make to the state, as well as the dangers they face on a daily basis. It played an important role in helping legislators understand the need to pass numerous bills. This was an excellent film in, in trying to demonstrate to those who are not familiar uh, with life uh, behind those correctional uh, facility walls what it's like, how tough it is, and that certainly uh, the more people that understand uh, the challenges that correction officers face each and every day, uh, the better legislation we'll get. In the eight years that Nice Copa is in existence, we're looking at two dozen bills at least that we got passed when for 30 years nothing was passed. NYSCOBA's legislative efforts also paid dividends in assisting the forgotten victims of Attica. From the earliest days of its founding, NYSCOBA worked with legislators and the governor's office to ensure that justice was done for these individuals. The effort culminated in 2005 when the state agreed to pay $12 million in compensation to the victims. The state also guaranteed survivors the right to hold yearly memorials outside the prison and acknowledged the impropriety of prohibiting claims based on the acceptance of workers' compensation funds. As NYSCOBA continued to grow, it became necessary to move into a larger, more permanent headquarters. In 2002, the union purchased 102 Hackett Boulevard in Albany. Here, a staff of professionals work on behalf of members, committee meetings are held, and NYSCOBA leaders conduct union business. In a sense, all dupes-paying members of NYSCOBA own a share of this building and are welcome there at any time. A major focus of NYSCOBA is protecting the rights of members through the Grievance and Legal Department, which works in close coordination with NYSCOBA's law firm. Under NYSCOBA, each officer is afforded legal representation from the beginning of the discipline process. As a matter of principle, NYSCOBA vigorously advocates on behalf of members in their dealings with state agencies. It's a practice that was not always followed before independence. I have observed several of my coworkers that got terminated from the job, and there seemed to be little to no fight. In addition to the support of their regional vice president and business agent, each member is represented by a lawyer who is thoroughly versed in civil service law and provisions of the NYSCOBA contract. Unlike many unions, NYSCOBA members are able to have direct contact with their lawyers throughout the course of their case. Previously, 
Officers facing disciplinary action were given no prior notice of the evidence against them and had to rely on a trained corrections officer to represent them. Seems to be a little bit more fair this way and it's certainly meeting with a lot more success on our part. This aggressive stance on behalf of officers has enabled the union to turn the tables on the agency and protect the jobs of officers across the state. People from the other side of the table say, I don't know why you would ever think about not utilizing the attorneys. Quite frankly, you're kicking our ass. When a member of NYSCOBA feels they are being treated unfairly by their agency, they have the right to submit a grievance. As in the case of disciplines, the union is very aggressive in its use of lawyers to protect the rights of members. Not all submitted cases are grievable under the terms of the contract. When this is the case, NYSCOBA leaders believe it is best to explain this to the member rather than carry on a losing battle. My philosophy is whether it's good news or bad news, give it to me straight up. Don't sell me smoke and mirrors. Tell me the deal and I'll have to deal with what the truth is. Should a member not be satisfied with the determination that a grievance not go forward, they have a final avenue of appeal through the Grievance and Legal Committee of the Executive Assembly. We have added an additional layer so that the member has an additional measure of appeal if they do not believe that the grievances are being handled in a manner that they feel appropriate. In addition to representing 21,000 correctional officers and sergeants, NYSCOBA also represents workers in 40 other titles in 16 agencies through its law enforcement division. The law enforcement membership is in every nook and cranny of the state and we're spread out so thin there's like 2,300 of us spread all over. Uh, whether it be in the state office buildings, whether it be in the Office of Mental Health, Office of Mental Retardation, motor vehicles, workers' comp, SUNY campuses, ski patrols. We cover lifeguards. We cover everybody. We cover park rangers, forest rangers. While they may be small in numbers compared to corrections officers, the law enforcement members are full members of the union and have equal access to programs, representation and contracts, and discipline matters, as well as a say in union affairs. Each group can stand up and fight for their position. We all have a vote and we can all stand there and whatever issue it is, bring it to the attention of the board and to all the members that are there. So the key is if I can raise these issues at any general assembly and say, okay, hey, we have a situation here, we have a problem here that we need addressed. Governor Pataki's decision to carve out non-corrections titles from the binding arbitration law created ill will which led to a challenge to NYSCOBA's representation. We did have officers who were ready to just throw in the towel and say, okay, we'll go with CSCA. And I just tried to stress to them, do you realize that we have a voice and we're heard, you know, and we're actually part of making decisions? NYSCOBA, they are a fighting, fighting team from the bottom right to the top. And they're not afraid to stand up and voice their opinion and ruffle some feathers. I like being the little guy, the runt, I still have, you know, the head person who's willing to fight for us just as much as the next guy. Despite the legislature's later actions and gubernatorial vetoes of repeated attempts to include law enforcement titles in binding arbitration, there have been real gains for these titles under NYSCOBA. Some of those benefits are our pre-shift briefing. So, uh, some of them are tier enforcement differential pays. Some of them are uniform allowances, the, the higher uniform allowances versus what the other bargaining units get. I mean, we have received a lot of benefits uh, in health insurance, workers' comp, being connected with correction officers. There is an upside to being with corrections and, and, and being a part of the larger organization. NYSCOBA operates under a central treasury. This enables the organization to receive the greatest amount of income from interest as possible. In 2007, that income totaled $450,000, up from $75,000 in 2000. The Central Treasury also ensures that the organization is managing its money in a professional and fair manner. We know where every penny is spent. And that's very important when you talk about accountability. If you send money out and you don't put any restrictions on it or you don't track it, you don't know where it goes. A union in, in Albany here can give the money out equally. There's not any favoritism, there's not any bias. Each year, the Treasurer submits a budget to the Executive Assembly which can be debated and modified before being voted on. Independence from national and international unions has also led to a financial windfall for members and greater control over dues. 
$2 million or $1.8 million go directly to AFSME and actually cuts into your bottom line. There was no say in how that money was spent either. It was just a parent organization with very little or, or no democratic process set in place. If uh, the parent organization wanted to raise the dues $5, they could do that. Under our constitution, the dues are only raised by the amount of increases. So if they get a 3% increase, that's how much our dues increases. Under Council 82 and AFSCME, if I want to raise the dues $10 per pay period, they'd go to the annual convention and do that. The following year, it'd be raised $10. The money raised by dues is used strictly for the benefit of members, and each NYSCOBA member is able to call on the union for support through a number of benevolent programs. We have bereavement program. We have a catastrophic program where, for instance, if somebody is home is destroyed in a fire, we can help them out. Or if there's someone who's ill with terminal cancer, something like that. The crown jewel of NYSCOBA's benevolent programs is the NYSCOBA Scholarship Fund. The program provides the children of members with $500 upon completion of their first college semester. Under Council 82, each local, plus the retiree's chapter, received one scholarship to award, limiting the number of recipients to 76 per year. Under NYSCOBA, that has increased exponentially. Anywhere from 250 to 300 uh, people apply every year, members apply, and nobody's turned down. NYSCOBA's scholarship program is among the most generous in the state and even outpaces many unions representing education professionals. Education is what makes our membership excel and our board believes that we should be on the cutting edge and that's why we do what we do. We want to make sure every member's child is taken care of. Funds are also available to each sector for programs of their choosing, such as community donations or member-related activities. We have special project funds that are available to each facility and you can come to membership meetings and make a motion to have certain events that you want to sponsor at the facility level. A couple officers, they've been doing this now for three years. We have an annual golf tournament. for It's a fun day basically for the facility, open to all the members at the facility and their friends and their family. And we get together and we play golf. It's a nice time. It's great. Everybody's having a good time. Yeah. It's great to see everybody just relaxed and you know, enjoying themselves. NYSCOBA has also invested heavily in benevolent and image enhancement activities across the state. For too long, corrections officers and sergeants were viewed in a negative light. With independence, they took control of how they presented themselves to the public at large. We really try to show the public that a correction officer is more than the old cliche, some tough guy with a bat in his hand that beats up criminals. We're citizens, you know, out there just like everybody else. We're average people. We have families. We're involved with community issues. We do little leagues. We're big in the art walk, and we have provisions where the average member doesn't utilize the union for disciplinary actions or to protect them. He utilizes the union to put out that message that NYSCOBA is very active in the community. At each executive assembly, NYSCOBA takes the time to recognize members who have brought credit upon their profession and fellow union members. These Valor Awards are a token of appreciation from officers to one of their own for taking action that goes above and beyond the call of duty. And I think it's important for the morale of the members, and I think it's important uh, for the morale of the, the general body here as it stands. It's nice to be able to recognize the people who do that, clearly showing that they do go on and above their daily duties. COPS CARE was formed to oversee all of NYSCOBA's community outreach activities. From the start, an effort was made to concentrate on programs that would have the greatest possible impact on children across the state. Smart program. We go in and talk to kids about child abduction, teaching them about staying away from certain people or people coming up to you. Don't be afraid to go to somebody and ask permission. And then we actually do a fingerprinting and digital photo ID of the kids that's Amber Alert ready. Choosing to lose. It's a reality based program where we go in and talk to the kids about decision making, peer pressure, and uh, bullying, and talking to them about the consequences of the decisions. And then we actually go through the prison setting with them, taking them right through from A to Z, from being arrested right through how you will live your life, your next 20 years, 25 years, whatever it may be. Every 15 minutes, it's a mock DWI video we show, and it talks about a girl driving drunk and how it changed her life, everybody with her, and her community. In addition to their own programs, Cops Care and NYSCOBA members are heavily involved with Special Olympics on a state, national, and international level.
We do the torch run. We uh, set up torch runs throughout the state to bring awareness to the Special Olympics. We go to events like the summer games, winter games, the fall games and work them, handing out awards, judging competitions or just being there for support. We do fire truck poles, airplane poles, polar plunges. Ensuring that NYSCOBA represents the needs and desires of the membership requires the participation of members at all levels of the organization. There are numerous opportunities for members to become involved in the running of the union. That's one of the things that in my site visits that I do on a routine basis is try to educate the members that they need to become more involved. They need to come to union meetings. They need to be more involved at facility level with uh, the stewards. Run for office. Be a sector steward. If you don't want to be a sector steward, there, there's lots of things at the, at the sector level that you can do to volunteer to help the union guys out. You know, whether it be sitting on committees or fundraisers. Should a member feel that there is an issue that needs to be addressed by the union, he or she is able to have their voice heard. Ultimately, it's the will of the majority that determines NYSCOBA's course. If a member has an issue that they wish to be addressed, the parliamentary procedure to do that would be to attend a sector meeting, make a motion, and then if that motion passes at their sector meeting, then the chief sector steward would bring that motion to the Executive Assembly. The Executive Assembly, it took the place of the parent organization, they're the overseers. But he gets a financial report, a financial treasury report every month. If they see, and they, they want questions answered, they see problems with the union, they'll go to the mic and during the Executive Assembly and bring it up. And we have to respond accordingly. All members of the Executive Assembly and the Executive Board of NYSCOBA are union members who have worked as a CO, a correction sergeant, or in one of the law enforcement titles. Each is responsible to the membership at election time. Should the need arise, there are provisions in the NYSCOBA Constitution enabling members to initiate recall procedures against executive board members. Ultimately, the power to order a recall election rests with the EA. In 2005, the NYSCOBA Certificate of Incorporation was formally amended to recognize the authority of the EA and ensure that no executive board would have absolute power. Through these provisions, NYSCOBA members are able to hold their representatives to account for their actions. This level of participation and accountability ensures that NYSCOBA reflects the desires of the members. While the process can at times be messy and confrontational, the freedom for officers to govern themselves and hold each other accountable for their future is what independence was all about. Back in 82, it was kind of the hierarchy made all the decisions, and I don't think the membership had as much of a voice as they do now with NYSCOBA. NYSCOBA opens everything up to all members with many different avenues to voice opinions. It's one man, one vote. The whole system is set up better to give the membership the opportunity to have their voice in what we do. A key element of NYSCOBA is the accessibility of leaders to members. Unlike other unions, any member can contact the top leaders and expect to communicate with them directly. I get a great deal of emails um, and I spend the time to respond back to the members because I think, again, through communications, it's important. I believe that if a member takes the time to type out a question or a response to the leadership of the organization, that the leadership of the organization to take the time and respond back to them. It's important to them to know that they've got somebody that they can call that can give them answers or assist them with, with their problem, whatever it may be. I had an issue and I tried to contact the president way back in 1987 and I never even got an acknowledgement of my letter. Maybe that's why after, you know, 10 or 12 years later I decided, well, I'm gonna try something different. Um, While one-on-one -on -one communications is always available, Ultimately, union leaders need to communicate with tens of thousands of members across the state. Keeping members informed is a key element in ensuring that members have accurate and up-to-date information. The main vehicle that we use to disseminate information is the website. There was many complaints and concerns that arose from the membership that NYSCOBA was less than conservative in regards to mailings. An average mailing out of NYSCOBA's office to all the membership costs about $8,000. March of 2006, the entire process from the opening statement to the award to the opinion to the pay bill, every single piece of documentation that was involved in the arbitration process is on the website. Every single um, executive assembly, copies of the minutes, 
Um, once they're approved by the assembly, they're put on the website, all the minutes from the executive board meetings. Uh, the executive board felt that it was very important to allow the members to know everything that was going on in Nice School. But each regional office, they have their own web page, which they might talk about specific things going on in their region. We do it independent. We try to get it out as close to every two months as possible, again, to relay to all the members as much information as we can. In a relatively short time, MyScoba has grown from a handful of people working in a borrowed office space in a basement to a major force for positive change in the lives of its 23,000 members. From contract improvements and an aggressive legislative agenda to benevolent programs and image-enhancing efforts, MyScoba continues to work to be the independent voice for New York's corrections officers, corrections sergeants, and associated law enforcement titles. Today, these dedicated men and women truly have a union that they can call their own. I mean, we worked around the clock. We worked our, our tails off to put an organization together. When people walk through the door of our union office and they see that there's departments and people handle issues from the various departments and all the concerns, well, that didn't happen overnight. We started basically without a paper clip. We didn't have a building, we had nothing. We hired the professionals that we needed to address our concerns. We put together the best workforce that we could possibly put together, and we continue to make progress in that direction. You would think that once you walk through the doors of Nice Copa, that it's been around for decades, and it hasn't. It's a new organization. I gotta say, it's a success story. If the union as a, as a whole, as an organization, attains a fair and equitable collective bargaining agreement, streamlines the grievance process. There is a tangible, attainable grievance that is going to have a positive impact on the membership as a whole and also ensure that the membership's rights are preserved and not erroneously discriminated against or disciplined. That's the true meaning of the, what Nice Coba's union is all about. The decision that was made on April 29th was absolutely the most important decision that anybody can make in their careers. It affects their family, it affects their livelihood, and they absolutely made the right choice. Gerald McEntee is the president of NAPAFSME. Never been elected, but he's the president. He made statements on numerous occasions that correction officers couldn't self-govern. And we're living proof we can. Not only can we self-govern, we can thrive. 